All right, next episode here. This is going to be a pretty complex and really, really rewarding episode because your dopamine sensors in your brain are about to be firing in a whole new way because I'm going to do my best to put a vocabulary and ideas and concepts to what makes your life and your environment and your day-to-day, how you can set it up in such a way where you have your your physiology, I mean, like, literally, like, your hormones in your body, your body, like, uh, your, whatever you want to call it, like, your very epigenetics <laughs> and how your body relates to the environment how you can get that all set up and engineered so that you're experiencing that flow state more and more consistently and it serves as like what I would call like the purest form of motivation it's not like a, a motivation like based off some like weird hype thing or like you need to listen to like some positive videos or um you know, read positive quotes or things like that. It's more things that I've found, especially recently, that have been working really, really well. Because when you're really honest with yourself, you realize like you got a body, you got to you got to honor that. And you can support your body and your mind and you're living in such a way where, again, it's very conducive for you to be in these like highly creative, motivated states where you can bring your best self through. Because picture yourself, okay, just to illustrate the point, and then I'm going to share a story with you. I'll illustrate the point like this. Like, imagine you're sleep deprived. You've been eating shitty food. And um, you got some big deadlines looming. And you're in debt. And um, you have some beliefs about the fact that... uh, I don't know, the the climate is changing. <laughs> like, imagine that that is one person's reality. Then you got another guy who lives next door, and he gets enough sleep, and he, you know, has some good uh, relationships in his life, and he's got a purpose and all that stuff. You know, he eats well and, um, you know, like, has some other beliefs. Or uh, ways of, um, I won't even say the word belief. He just has like a, an, an outlook or a philosophy on life that's actually like empowering. You know, like he realizes that humans can take responsibility and, and change. Which one of those people do you want on your team? Which one of those people do you want around you? And, and if you hear some background sound, I'm, uh, I'm driving. And if, if you don't like it and you'd rather see me on video, well, someone can come make a deep fake of me and, uh, you know, make some... <laughs> Some AI version of me so you can look at me on the screen. But um, I just got out of... um, We run a book club here in Minneapolis. And it's like really good session where it helped me um, elaborate on some of these ideas. And I got to capture this because it was like flow state galore. Like really cool people coming together for a really cool purpose. And when you get the right ideas coming together, it it, it works really well. So this is a story I want to share with you that is going to illustrate a a, a pretty cool point we'll call the the point that i want to illustrate like your flow stack okay the term stack was first introduced to me the idea of a software stack like let's say you run a business and then you have your emails then it goes to your landing page and then from landing page goes to a checkout page and then from a checkout page goes to a facebook group and then the facebook group now is where you deliver your value. That would be a stack. All the, how, how all those points relate to each other. But then you could also have a stack for like your skills. So let's say you're a web developer, but then you're also good at talking to people and you're good at networking and you also, you know, like nature and rock climbing. That would be like your stack of talent and interests and how that interrelates. You could see how someone could have a more valuable stack than a less valuable stack, okay? So that's the point I want to illustrate, but I'm going to share a story with you first. That is what actually prompted this whole thing. 
I was chatting with a guy who's local here. Really cool guy. Comes from meetups and everything. And it's it's been awesome to hear like how he sees the value in getting together with like-minded driven people. And we're having this conversation today because it it's a rainy day here. And it's like cloudy. And he was talking about how um, when, when you have a reaction when you open your window in the morning like to, to the uh, to the weather how that can like mess with your day you know if it if it's a cloudy day and I was looking at that and it was it was fascinating because I'm, I'm sure you can relate to this like if it's a cloudy day versus a sunny day but then we were like taking it to the extreme like hey well what if it was only sunny days you know you'd actually be freaking out because you'd be in a drought you'd be like dang where's the rain we need the rain and then the rain comes and then you cheer because you're like yeah thank you Thank you, nature. It's raining. Um, But if it was gray and rainy all the time, you know, it'd be like kind of depressing. So it's like, what is that mechanism right there? And are you going to let that mechanism influence your ability to get into that state or that flow where you're going to create? Now, the whole purpose of this podcast, Purpose in Reality, is for you to realize that your best purpose... And the best reality trumps any weather, any flow state, any motivation, any of that stuff. Because real purpose is you go do the damn thing whether you feel like it or not. It, the, the feeling or the flow state or the motivation is virtually irrelevant. Okay? So let me just make that abundantly clear. Now, at the same time, it's pretty cool when you can engineer your life and look at with self-honesty what the heck is going on as a human like I was alluding to earlier where if you just aren't even aware of flow states or you aren't even aware of dopamine and you have no vocabulary at all for how to structure your life so that you can experience like optimal performance and optimal creativity and idea flow and things like that like there's a way we can use this hardware that we have as a human and the software as a human to put the odds in our favor that we're most likely going to show up as our best most creative self and that is now the focus of the rest of this episode so i was having this conversation with this guy and he was uh he he said this really cool phrase i'm I'm guessing he's going to listen to this at some point so he'll probably be laughing he's like yeah well normally you know even if the weather's all you know shitty and gray make myself my coffee, sit down. And like when I have coffee, it's like instant optimism. (laughs) And I laughed because I have the same point. It's really funny. (laughs) For those of you who like coffee, I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, And I mean, that's a whole other episode about like triggers and stuff. And like, if you are actually like dependent on coffee and caffeine and that kind of thing. And like, I've had vast swaths of my life where I have not drank coffee or caffeine and don't worry I'm still optimistic then I mean optimistic in the best way um not like a Pollyanna like bullshit like delusional but like in in the truest sense like I am always focused on creating the best outcome and by that is what I mean by optimist like you're optimizing for that so we opened up this conversation where he was asking like do you think it's possible where no matter the weather, no matter the situation, you can, like, direct yourself. He didn't quite use that word, but, like, he's basically like, yeah, like, do you think you could set it up? Because I, I, I brought up this point to him where I had, years ago, heard this phrase. I called it, um, it, it was this idea of, like, having the best day ever, every day. It's from this guy named David Avocado Wolf. I used to be super into, like, permaculture and biohacking and shit, and he's... He's one of the guys who like coined the phrase superfoods. He's pretty out there. Very out there. But, you know, investigate everything. Keep what's good. So he has this phrase like, but, uh, today's the best day ever. I was looking at that and I was like, yeah, today's the best day ever. Cool. But like how I look at that based on my programming and the architecture within my own mind is I like to phrase it as best day yet because that is leaving room for tomorrow and the next day and the next day to be the best day yet whereas if you're saying best day ever I mean semantics you know so I brought this up to him I was like hey 
what if every day could be the best day yet? Whether it's a tornado happening or the most crazy news you ever heard or like shit's going sideways or it is a great day. Where if within yourself you have the resolve and the true understanding and accuracy to live the fact that today can be the best day yet. It does not mean you may feel the best yet. It may mean it's a really fucking difficult day. But within yourself, you can then use everything to your advantage. You can use everything to learn from it and to make it be the best day yet. So I brought that up to him and it was pretty cool because he's like, huh, how would you do that? And then this is what now was the jumping off point for this concept that I want to share with you because it is so freaking valuable. I can't not share it. This will make today be the best day yet for me to capture this information on this audio. By the way, there's a really fascinating talk that was given recently called The AI Dilemma. If you haven't listened to it, I suggest listen to it. Because the way that I interpreted that blew my mind. They're talking about an AI. With AI, there's these things called large language models, like uh, GPT is a version of that, and Google has theirs and everything. And in the talk, they explain this, which I've been saying this for years. A lot of the people that I work with, especially with techno tutor, have been saying this for years. Everything is vocabulary. Everything is language. And they were saying this straight up in a very practical way of looking at technology. And this will relate to what I've been saying this whole episode. Just, just I just want to lay out this point is there's language to everything. Things that you might not think is language like mathematics or, um, I don't know, computer information or uh, temperature or the climate or anything like that. It's all language. You can break it all down into language. Even pictures are language. It's a picture is worth a thousand, a thousand words. You know, it's all language. It, it, it's a really like gnarly concept to wrap your head around. And you need the language purified and clear so that you can even comprehend that. So as that settles in now, there's a language now here to crafting the architecture and establishing and living that architecture within your own mind and your being and your body and your environment so that you can create the most optimal flow of everything. Put it like that. So this ties in now to, and this whole thing that I'm bringing up is like a stack it's a stack of how you go about your day and how within yourself you have like neurochemicals going like, you know, flow states, right? Like there's multiple triggers for flow states. There's adrenaline, there's dopamine, there's serotonin, there's oxytocin, um, norepinephrine. And here's a little example of this to, to illustrate the point. The point being you have a stack in your life, it's like a a flow stack, flow architecture, where when you can understand this and you have the language and the vocabulary of it, you will never look at your day to day the same way. And therefore you can virtually guarantee you will have the best day yet every single day. (laughs) So here's one example that illustrates this. When you're learning something new, there's usually a moment of frustration or many. It's like a frustrating experience to learn. Now, you can use certain tools like TechnoTutor, hands down, facilitates this process so it's not frustrating to learn. You can actually just input the stuff. But some people will have a frustrating experience building the habit of doing the learning like that. Now, let's even say beyond just using TechnoTutor in general when you want to learn something new or you're doing something in a new environment or whatever, there's a moment of frustration. That moment of frustration is actually norepinephrine flooding in your brain And when it's flooding in your brain, it's stimulating different connections. 
So if you're experiencing frustration when you're learning something new, it's actually a good sign that you're close to a breakthrough. Like I've had this time and time again with building business because building business and living your purpose is the ultimate personal development. Actually, I'll say it like this. Building business is personal development. But if we're going to take this to the extreme, which I love to do, and I mean extreme in like the best way, like if we're going to take this to its ultimate point, its logical conclusion, the best personal development would be building the best business and purpose, which is obviously you changing how humans learn and implement and grow and connect with each other so we can create the best outcomes for all instead of just looking out for your own self-interest, okay? And so you have this experience where you're frustrated and you will have your body has different things and I'm sure there's so much stuff that science hasn't even figured out yet like we like to think oh the science is settled science by its very definition for anyone who can actually read means it's never settled science is the very process of inquiring and evolving our knowledge but that's in depth for a future episode And the point here is when you can build your vocabulary and your language, thus the architecture of your mind and your body and your life, and you have principles as a core part of that stack, the actual starting point of the whole stack is principles. And there'll be another episode on the 13 best principles that apply to everyone, anytime, anywhere, because it's pure common sense. And as you have that, it's part of your stack. And then you realize certain things, like you have different flow triggers. So when you wake up, do you breathe? You know, as part of your day, rebuilding your vocabulary at an unconscious level, technotutor. You're doing self-forgiveness, self-realization, self-correction. That's also a stack. And then as you have that, and then you have an optimal environment where you're working, you're going out meeting people, you know, doing your process for building your business, living your purpose. And that's like the daily stack. And then you have your weekly stack. And as you have that and you do that over time, it compounds. And it compounds in such a way where there's a real world external result, but then there's a real internal result. And so if you want to know how to feel really damn good, pretty much all the time, where you have moments where you experience like bliss and euphoria and fun and challenge and expansion. And there's also going to be times where challenges are thrown at you and there will be moments of like intensity or even moments of like despair or um, like a pain, let's say, like the growing pains where all of that is part of this stack where you take it on and you've essentially automated that you're able to take it on with this power and like another word is like gusto I know it's a word people probably don't use that often or the word zeal z-e-a-l or vigor and you take that on and you keep then building your vocabulary of what is going on because you have self-awareness There's such a power to that. And it's something that people can't take from you. No one can take from you. So to make this all real and apply this in your life, I'm going to encourage you, write out or ponder this. What is your current day-to-day stack? And it could be anything from just what's your process and your habits to do some research. Learn about like neurochemicals and environments And there's a really cool book called Where Good Ideas Come From by uh, Stephen Johnson. Just watch the TED Talk or the whiteboard video on YouTube. And he explains like how you can engineer an environment so there's maximum collaboration. It's a phrase called negative quarter power scaling. It's so cool. It's like it's the same mathematical formula in nature as to why a like a little baby frog or a little baby bird, their heartbeat 
is it's like a linear function of how it relates to a whale's heartbeat and how that also fits in to how long they live. So imagine a little hummingbird, how their heart um, beats, let's say, 100 times a second or something or whatever. Someone's going to fact check me and whatever. But let's, for sake of example, let's say it beats 100 times a second. And they live for, I don't know, let's say 10 days because they live a very short life. And then you have a whale where, let's say, their heart beats 10 times a minute. And they live, let's say, instead of 10 days, they live for, you know, 100 years. So there's like this really interesting effect that is the same effect that happens in cities because everything is a big hologram. I'm not saying everything is therefore a computer simulation and nothing is real. It's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that interwoven into the very fabric and substance of life itself, there are, there's, there's a language. Again, everything's language. And the pattern goes throughout the animal kingdom. It goes throughout society and culture. Man, I could do a whole episode on Where Good Ideas Come From by Stephen Johnson because that book is fire. But it happens also in cities. So they measure innovation based on population density. Like, for example, the time of the Enlightenment also correlated with when coffee shops came about. Because people went from previously... Um, and, and when better sanitation came around, because previously people would usually be drinking beer or watered down beer all day long because it was a way to kill the bacteria in, um, in the water supply. But now imagine this. People are used to like getting basically half drunk all day. And now you have on the, you know, every corner in Paris has a coffee shop. And you have these people coming together and writing and sharing ideas and talking and, you know, businesses and commerce and markets and politicians coming in the density of conversation and ideas ex- being exchanged that also goes by the negative quarter power scaling so if you're in small town north dakota or idaho compared to being in the central business district of manhattan or brooklyn or or philadelphia or whatever there's an exponential more amount of innovation happening and how you would measure this and how they have measured this. One example um, among many is like how many patents are filed every year. Now this may change because you have now the internet has changed a lot. And now with artificial intelligence, really disrupting things in a big way, nonetheless, being in cities, I speak from firsthand experience. There is way more energy, way more innovation happening. It's not to say if you lived in the country that you can't also have innovation, but you would have to have another way to stimulate and basically force feed massive amounts of ideas into a environment. So I'm sharing all this again because your thing you can do if you want to implement this is look at your stack of how you go about your day with, yes, your habits, but also the ideas, also the... um, the your understanding your vocabulary of things going on inside you like again like the neurochemicals and things like that and also then your stack for how you go about meeting people and being in the right environments so do you work out of an office do you work out of a co-working space do you work in a cubicle in some boring gray building with fluorescent lighting Compared to you, do, do you work out of a WeWork where there's unlimited coffee and a kombucha bar and, you know, they have events every night. So really look for yourself at the stack that you currently have and then play around with ideas of what can you add to your stack. Now keep the fundamental pillars. <laughs> for those of you who have the purpose and you're dedicated to, you know, creating a world that's best for all and changing the political system and the education system and, you know, the people that I work with closely, obviously, like, that's an essential part of your stack. But just ask yourself, like, what are some ideas of what you could do that would influence this? Like, maybe at the beginning of every day, like, are you making time to add new stuff, like reading? Like, do you have study time built in your day? For those of you who know about a mini-day schedule, like, that is your stack. But then also look at what is your talent stack that you have and how does it all interrelate?
So, like, what's the talent stack? Like, are you good at persuasion? Are you good at public speaking? Are you good at promotion? Are you good at getting people in a room? And if not, what do you need to learn to make that happen? But then how you get yourself to then learn those skills, and this is what will bring it full circle, is what is that architecture within yourself, your being, your body, your mind, so that you have now maximized your ability to learn and grow and change so that way you can master these new skills rapidly. Especially when you got techno tutor, obviously. That's, that is the way to learn. It's, virtually, it, it's the only way to learn. <laughs> like if you actually want to learn a massive amount of stuff. So now as you have this, and now you look at, okay, what is my purpose? And what is the reality I'm dealing with? This is like a whole new level of language to help you really define and understand and now articulate what is going on. So now you can become even more effective in what you're doing, All right? So go ahead and share this with people who need to hear this. And um, leave, a, leave a comment. Leave a comment on uh, your thoughts about your stack. If you have cool ideas, stack them in there. See you.